Hi everyone, Sue here from 1A Auto, and today I want to talk to you about clutch systems. Not just clutch systems, but clutch systems in as simple as cars and light duty trucks. I want to talk to you about the components that's in them and how they work. I also want to answer questions that are probably commonly asked about how my car failed or why it failed in a clutch system. So I drew a diagram of a basic clutch system. So that way I can break it down. Maybe you can, when you see the parts, you'll put them in your place, in your head, and understand a little bit easier. It's basically, it's real simple. Here's your car, and there's a seat. There's your shifter, that's your manual, and this is your clutch pedal. Starts off when you get in the car and you press down on that pedal, that pushes a plunger in here where your brake fluid is in the master, because most masters take brake fluid. Not just ma brake masters, but clutch masters also. The fluid comes down on hydraulic hose and pushes the slave cylinder out, which is usually mounted on the side of the transmission. This little hole right here is where the clutch fork slides through and it mounts on a pivot on the inside. So this part of the fork right here is sticking out. This plunger goes up against it, so you push down and it literally pushes that in like that. The clutch fork now goes out, which the release bearing, AKA throw out bearing, is attached to the fork. Pushes in on the pressure plate in the center forks here are metal fingers that are just like, just like your hand, and it pushes them to push against the clutch disc, which in turn rests up against the flywheel. Now you come back to the transmission and it shifts. Release the clutch and everything engages and releases and the, trans the engine is free to spin once again. So here we have our basic components for a clutch system. These components right here came from 1A Auto, it comes as a kit. This is our flywheel we had turned at a machine shop. So this is how it sets up in the car. This could be called a pilot bearing or sometimes a pilot shim. This is a or bushing. This is a pilot bushing on this particular model. They don't put a bearing in there. This is going to go inside the crank shaft where it is milled out so that the extension of the transmission spline can go in there. This is the flywheel. This gets bolted right to the crank. The engine crank is what the pistons are attached to. So you have your flywheel attached to that. Then you take your disc pressure, your clutch disc, shall I say. And this is going to go just like that against that flywheel. This disc part is made up of brake component pad making. Sometimes it's a little bit different. It has a lot of fiberglass in it. So that sits down like that. These springs pick up the torque in the shatter, shutter, shall I say, the shutter of it. And here is our pressure plate. Pressure plate has a disc just like a rotor. Some pressure plate, these are called fingers. So these metal fingers put a pressure on the actual disc. There are pins to line up. So you line up your pins with the bolt holes. And this is how it looks inside the car. Just like that. So now you have your flywheel, your disc, and your pressure plate. Now on the transmission side, this is that fork that we were talking about earlier. This is gonna go through the side of the transmission and here is your release bearing or a throw out bearing. Most commonly called a throw out bearing, called a throw bearing. So that's gonna sit like that and that rests right there. And this pivot point is on the outside of the transmission, just like this, the housing goes right there. So this bearing, this center piece spins, the outer piece does not. This is spinning, so when someone steps on the clutch, this pushes down on those forks. That's how much hydraulic pressure is there. The slave cylinder, which is mounted on the side of the transmission, literally fits right into that divot, just like that. So the hydraulic hose is where that yellow cap is, and that is usually in this position, collapsed all the way down. That's what it looks like. And when you push down on it, it extends out. That's what it looks like going down the road when your foot's off the clutch. Fully extended out is when you push on the clutch. And up in front of the driver's seat in the engine compartment is the clutch master. This bracket right here is where the clutch pedal attaches to and it has an adjustment. So you can feel the adjustment of when the disc is hitting on the flywheel and you want it set at the perfect level. This is just a basic clutch system out of a passenger vehicle, but when I did the job, I found a lot wrong with each piece. So I wanna go over with you the diagnostic parts that I found. So the first thing here is the pilot shaft bushing. Now, some of them have bearings, this one has a bushing. 
it's all marked up for me removing it, but I can also see a lot of shininess on the inside. So there's a, this is like a brass bushing coated, and whenever I can see brass shining, that tells me that that gear from out of the transmission going into the back of the crank has, has some wobble to it. So they might end up having a transmission condition. They're almost at 200,000 miles, wouldn't be ab abnormal. But this I would milk until I actually have problems with it. And we have a new bushing in the car. This is the disc plate. And what happens with this, normally you can tell if someone's a good driver with a clutch or a bad driver. You've got brake material like brake pad material on both sides. This one is worn pretty equal. It's got a little bit more wear on one side than the other. But by looking at this, I don't know the mileage on it. Uh, I would have to say this person's driving a standard, pretty normal, average normal. But we turn attention to the springs, which picks up the centrifugal force of the shakiness. And uh, it's a good thing that we brought this in to do the job because the springs were ripping the uh, metal material and that spring is ready to bust out of there. And this one is get some play in it and they're not supposed to have any play. I shouldn't be able to move that at all. So that there, that can be caused by the driver popping the clutch, not so much riding the clutch, but just jerking it and popping it off. The springs have a centrifugal force to them so they actually supposed to pick that up, but that's done too many times and starting to break. This is what we call a pressure plate. These, this looks in pretty good shape. The uh, fingers aren't bent. Sometimes you'll find these bent or really a big groove worn out. Starting to have some wear marks on it, but that's, that's normal from an actual clutch being used. And the back part here, it's almost like a brake surface, but this is the part that goes against the actual disc. And usually you'll find hot spots, blue spots. Uh, there's nothing here, so this person once again, driving the clutch, pretty normal. Good wear and tear on this. Then we get to the throwout bearing. Now this is the part that it attaches to the fork that goes inside the transmission. And when you step on the hydraulic, when you step on the clutch, the hydraulic clutch, that pushes out and rides, pushes on those fingers. This is the bearing part. I don't know if you can hear this, but that is not supposed to make any noise. <laughs> that should be a lot smoother than that. So that tells me that these bearings in here are pretty scuffed up, pretty bad. So they're gonna start to hear, if you ever push the clutch in and hear this a whiny noise, more than likely your throat bearing is on its way out. So then we move up to the hydraulic piece. This is a slave cylinder, so the hydraulic fluid, which is brake fluid on this vehicle, goes in here. But how I diagnose this is on its way out is you see the shininess right here? It looks like it's wet, because it is. The seal is starting to leak. You can see all the fluid in there. That hydraulic seal inside here, which pushes that piston onto that rod, it's got fluid going by it. So therefore that, you're not gonna get a good pedal. You're gonna actually have a bad pedal. The pedal will actually be too low and not pushed all the way back up. Here is the clutch master. Now, this is where they would leak. Usually you'll find a seal blown here. This is up by your feet. So your foot is right here on the clutch pedal. This is up in the firewall underneath the steering wheel. If you ever feel like your clutch fluid you have to add to it, first thing you want to do is check your slave cylinder to see if that's blown. Second thing is check this boot right here. If you see shiny wetness right here, that means the internal seal is blown. You need to change your clutch master. Just wanted to go over a few more things about the most common problems I've seen through the years with clutches when they come into my shop. Slave cylinder, throwout bearing, clutch master, clutch disc. A lot of times people come in and the pedal is not all the way up the way it should be. First thing I'll check is the fluid. If the fluid is low, then I know there is a leak. Uh, if the fluid's high, then I'm gonna check for adjustment. And I'm gonna go for a road test and I'm gonna see when I lift that clutch up where it grabs. If it grabs way high up towards the top where your knee is on, your, on the dash, then we're gonna have a worn disc, more than likely. If it, is, it grabs right off the floor, within an inch or so, that clutch is in great shape, but maybe we're out of adjustment here. Pedal's supposed to be nice and firm and not drop down when your foot is not on it. So the adjustment would be right here on the clutch master, and that is a simple uh, loosen up this lock bolt. It's a lock bolt right here, locks it. And the push rod is actually a threaded rod, and you can just turn this with a pair of pliers or by hand until the pedal's nice and firm. Don't want it too tight, because if it's too tight, then you're putting pressure on the actual clutch system, and that's not what you want. So if your fluid's low, first place I would look is the slave cylinder. Pull this boot back, and you're gonna see if there's fluid. 
this fluid there, not just a little bit of grease, they come with grease. If you see fluid there, then you know that the internal seal is leaking, you gotta replace that. Condition of the fluid is a key factor here. A lot of times I see it black like this stuff. This is black. It should be clear, it's brake fluid. I know you know what brake fluid looks like. That is overheated brake fluid. This is, that's just, that's a lot. <laughs> and the fact that this clutch was still working, that's a, that's a great deal for them. They, they made it safely here. <laughs> so that should be done regular maintenance. So if you go to a regular technician or mechanic, that's something they should be looking out for you. Throw out bearing. They make a lot of whiny noises. People sit there and go, I have this whiny noise coming from the mid vehicle. It's your throw out bearing 90% of the time. This is just a sealed bearing in there. There's no grease in it. And it spins around every time you put your foot down on that clutch up against the pressure plate. Uh, pre Mature wear could be also from someone sitting at a stoplight and some people just put their foot on the clutch and they just sit there. Well, this thing has to spin around the whole time because it's got pressure on the, on the pressure plate and it's just sitting there spinning at idle. You're unnecessarily heating up that bearing. So try to stop that habit. The other is manufacturers, defective pieces, or just overall wear and tear. These springs pop out quite often. If they didn't wear the disc down, these springs are usually breaking and coming out of the actual part. And you can see this one was on its way out, split the metal. I feel this can be caused a lot by popping the clutch or even downshifting to the wrong gear at a high RPM because this spring system has to turn like a clock to centrifugal force. So if you downshift from, say you're in fourth or fifth gear, you go right down to second, on top of the RPMs racing up, this puppy is taking a lot of that stress. So be kind to your car and your hydraulics and your clutch system and it will be kind to you. Thanks for watching. Visit 1AAuto.com, your place for DIY auto repairs, for great parts, great service and more content.